What kind of fighting is it going to be? It's house to house and from room to room. The most ambitious series of communist attacks yet mounted, spreading violence the entire length of the country. Way, the ancient imperial city. We will prevail in Vietnam. In early 1968, U.S. combat troops had been in Vietnam for nearly three years, and a strong anti-war sentiment was growing at home. Public perception of the war reached a turning point on January 31st, when a 70,000-strong force of North Vietnamese and Viet Cong soldiers launched a simultaneous attack against more than 100 military and civilian targets, known as the Tet Offensive. And as it raged, it was apparent that these attacks were very well planned and very well coordinated. Hue was the cultural and religious center of Vietnam and had remained mostly untouched throughout the war. It is to Vietnamese what old Boston is to Americans. Despite the city's strategic importance to the U.S., it was left largely undefended. Officials didn't believe Hue was a likely target, despite mounting evidence of a large-scale enemy offensive. The NVA had massed tens of thousands of soldiers and material in the months preceding the Tet holiday. Tet is the first day of the Lunar New Year and one of the largest celebrations in Vietnam. Many Arvin soldiers stationed in Hue had returned home on leave for the holiday. Fourteen enemy battalions assaulted Hue, catching U.S. commanders by surprise, and easily captured much of the city with a little resistance. Uh, the, the enemy very deceitfully has taken advantage of the Tet truce in order to create max, maximum consternation uh, within uh, South Vietnam, uh, particularly in the populated areas. Two Allied compounds inside the city, the South Vietnamese 1st Infantry Division headquarters and a U.S. MACV base were able to hold off the enemy until reinforcements arrived. It would now fall on Task Force X-Ray, composed of the Army's 3rd Brigade 1st Cavalry Division, 2nd Brigade 101st Airborne Division, and the 1st Battalion 1st Marines and 1st and 2nd Battalion 5th Marines to retake the city, along with the 1st Arvin Division. Way is divided into two districts by the Perfume River. The southern city, and to the north, the Old City, commanded by a massive 19th century fortress known as the Citadel. The Marines would clear the southern city, while the Army and Arvin forces handled the north. Operation Way City would be the first urban combat the Marines had faced since the Korean War. The Tet celebration became the firework of war. Enemy strength was largely underestimated, and over the next month, outnumbered U.S. and Arvin troops would fight a bitter, intense, house-to-house -house battle to root out the well-armed and dug-in enemy. The fighting was often too intense to evacuate casualties. By February 10th, the southern city was in Marine hands, but the heavily fortified citadel remained under NVA control. Marines were sent north to join the fight. Constantly under heavy enemy fire, U.S. and Arvin forces fought through long, brutal enemy attacks. Momentum turned against the NVA when their supply lines were severed in the third week of February, and the resistance crumbled. On February 24th, Arvin forces raised their colors over the Citadel. Heavy firefights continued as the NVA withdrew, and on March 2nd, Operation Way City ended. Throughout South Vietnam, the Tet Offensive was quickly countered and soundly defeated, but Way City would end up being one of the longest and bloodiest battles of the Vietnam War, with both sides suffering heavy casualties. Officials have a poor record of interpreting this war. It will be difficult now, even more, or even more rather, to believe the United States has been doing as well as these officials have said. But it is increasingly clear to this report that the only rational way out then will be to negotiate, not as victors, but as an honorable people who lived up to their pledge to defend democracy and did the best they could. <laughs>